While Montreal was founded as Ville Marie in 1642, Montreal didn't even have a port at the beginning of 1800. Now, the Port of Montreal has some pretty incredible figures, which include 26 kilometers of wharfs, 6,300 companies that deal with logistics, 100 kilometers of rail line, 23 terminals, and it serves 2,000 ships a year and 2,500 trucks per day. This pond contains two fountains, which in fact are composites of somewhere between 10 and 12 spigots. A little difficult to examine them more carefully without contravening the no-bathing regulation posted by the pond. The streams of water are propelled approximately 5 meters into the air, or about 16 and a half feet. These are nowhere near as impressive as the jet d'eau in Geneva, Switzerland, which inspired the Saudis to build the world's highest fountain in Jeddah, which shoots water 260 meters in the air and is illuminated by over 500 light-emitting diodes. Given the aridity of that part of the world, the water is pumped from the Red Sea with the mass of water that is airborne in the King Fahd's fountain at any given time, reaching 16 tons. These fountains, too, are nothing like the fountains with different lighting effects or laminar flows. The two are very simple, and they provide a pleasant place to stroll, have your lunch if you work in the area, or a place to have a picnic. Unlike some of the other fountains, which create more of a mist, thus refracting the sunlight to form a rainbow, these plumes did not. However, one of them seems to have one of the nozzles bent out of vertical alignment, viewing water at about a 45 degree angle. A few days ago, Environment Canada issued its first frost warning to this autumn. This may have for some future episodes of virtual Montreal fountain tours, though I do have a plan of seeking out some of the fountains in our shopping malls to share with you.